the conflict thesis that suggests that religion and science have been in conflict methodologically, factually, and politically throughout history has long been discredited and has lost favor among the majority of contemporary scientists and historians of science. Contemporary scientists and historians widely accept a complexity thesis which thoroughly describes the entangled relationship that science has with religious beliefs and emphasizes the different political, cultural, social, or intellectual aspects present in relationships between science and religion and acknowledges the rich complexity and diversity of interplay between science and religion. Science and Religion, Exploring the Complexity Thesis. The references and resources that I will be reading throughout this video are linked and timestamped in the description below. I'll be pausing periodically to provide my own commentary. The relationship between science and religion has been characterized in terms of one, harmony, suggesting that science and religion have and can coexist without conflict. Two, mutual independence, suggesting that science and religion are two mutually independent endeavors which must remain separate. And three, conflict, suggesting that science and religion are fundamentally and inherently in conflict and incompatible. Events in Europe, such as the Galileo Affair of the early 17th century, associated with the Scientific Revolution and the Age of Enlightenment, led scholars such as John William Draper to postulate in 1874 a conflict thesis, suggesting that religion and science have been in conflict methodologically, factually, and politically throughout history. The conflict thesis has since lost favor among the majority of contemporary scientists and historians of science. However, some contemporary philosophers and scientists such as Richard Dawkins, Lawrence Krauss, Peter Atkins, and Donald Prothero still subscribe to this thesis. So let me pause there. So what this is saying is that the idea that science and religion are in conflict and incompatible is a thesis that has lost favor amongst most contemporary scientists and historians of science. I'll continue reading. The conflict thesis is a historiographical approach in the history of science that originated in the 19th century with John William Draper and Andrew Dixon White. It maintains that there is an intrinsic intellectual conflict between religion and science and that it inevitably leads to hostility. The consensus among historians of science is that the thesis has long been discredited, which explains the rejection of the thesis by contemporary scholars. I will pause now and reiterate what I just read. The consensus among historians of science is that the thesis that science and religion are in conflict has long been discredited, which explains the rejection of the thesis by contemporary scholars. And there are one, two, three, four, five sources to that sentence. I'll continue reading. Into the 21st century, historians of science widely accept a complexity thesis. Before the 19th century, no one had pitted science against religion or vice versa in writing. The relationship between religion and science became an actual formal topic of discourse in the 19th century. More specifically, it was around the mid 19th century that the discussion of science and religion first emerged because before this time science still included moral and metaphysical dimensions and was not inherently linked to the scientific method and the term scientist did not emerge until 1834. So let me pause there to interject that the modern idea that science and religion are in conflict is an idea that is roughly 200 years old, right? It started around the mid 1800s. However, it has been discredited in modern times. I will continue reading. Historians of science today have moved away from the conflict model, which is based mainly on two historical episodes, those involving Galileo and Darwin, in favor of a complexity model because religious figures took positions on both sides of each dispute and there was no overall aim by any party involved in discrediting religion. In a summary of the historiography of the conflict thesis, Colin Russell, the former president of Christians in Science, said that Draper takes such liberty with history. Draper is the author of the conflict thesis. Draper takes such liberty with history, perpetuating legends as fact that he is rightly avoided today in serious historical study. The same is nearly as true of White, though his prominent apparatus of prolific footnotes may create a misleading impression of meticulous scholarship. Let me pause because that was a bar, as we say in our community. So let me summarize what we just read. So. That particular quote was talking about Draper and White, the two people who originated and perpetuated 
the idea that science and religion were in conflict. When it comes to Draper, they say that he takes liberty with history, perpetuating legends as fact. And this is why he is avoided as a serious historical study today. When it comes to White, the other author of the theses that religion and science are in conflict, he says that because of his prolific footnotes, it can create a misleading impression of meticulous scholarship. So he collaborated with an individual who was perpetuating legends as fact, as it's stated here. But because he had meticulous footnotes, those legends that were perpetuated as fact gave the impression of scholarship. Wow. And this is what is being said of the authors of the thesis that religion and science are in conflict. Let me continue reading. While some historians had always regarded the Draper White thesis as an oversimplifying and distorting a complex relationship, in the late 20th century, it underwent more systematic reevaluation. The result is the growing recognition among historians of science that the relationship of religion and science has been much more positive than is sometimes thought. Although popular images of controversy continue to exemplify the supported hostility of Christianity to new scientific theories, studies have shown that Christianity has often nurtured and encouraged scientific endeavor, while at other times the two have coexisted without either tension or attempts at harmonization. If Galileo and the Scopes trial come to mind as examples of conflict, they were the exceptions rather than the rule. A few modern historians of science, such as Peter Barker, Bernard Goldstein, and Crosby Smith, propose that scientific discoveries, such as Kepler's laws of planetary motion in the 17th century, and the reformulation of physics in terms of energy in the 19th century, were driven by religion. Let me pause right there and reiterate. So, there are modern historians of science that propose that scientific discoveries were driven by religion. Wow. Let me continue reading. Religious organizations and clerics figure prominently in the broad histories of science until the professionalization of the scientific enterprise in the 19th century led to tensions between scholars taking religious and secular approaches to nature. Even the prominent examples of religion's apparent conflict with science, the Galileo affair in 1614 and the Scopes trial in 1925, were not pure instances of conflict between science and religion, but included personal and political facts in the development of each conflict. Scientists and public perceptions of the conflict thesis. This thesis is still held to be true in whole or in part by some scientists, including the theoretical physicist and cosmologist Stephen Hawking, who said, there is a fundamental difference between religion, which is based on authority, and science, which is based on observation and reason. Science will win because it works. Others, such as Steven Weinberg, grant that it is possible for science and religion to be compatible since prominent scientists are also religious, but he sees some significant tensions that potentially weaken religious benefits overall. However, global studies on actual beliefs held by scientists show that most scientists do not subscribe to the conflict perspective. Only about one third or less hold this view, and instead, most believe that the relation is independence or collaboration between science and religion. As such, the conflict perspective on science and religion is an invention of the West. Let me pause there and add my commentary. That is a point that I have reiterated in multiple videos, that this idea that science and religion are in conflict, that is a characteristic of Western civilization or what we colloquially call in our community white man science, right? All right, let me continue reading. A study done on scientists from 21 American universities showed that most did not perceive conflict between science and religion either. In the study, the strength of religiosity in the home in which a scientist was raised, current religious attendance, peers' attitudes toward religion, all had an impact on whether or not scientists saw religion and science as in conflict. Scientists who had grown up with a religion and retained that identity, or had identified as spiritual, or had religious attendance, tended to perceive less or no conflict. However, those not attending religious services were more likely to adopt a conflict paradigm. Additionally, scientists were more likely to reject conflict theses if their peers held positive views of religion. Science historian Ronald Numbers suggests that the conflict theory lingers in the popular mind due to a few set of controversies such as creation evolution, stem cells, and birth control. He notes that the history of science reflects no intrinsic, inevitable conflict between religion and science. So let me stop and give my commentary. 
So when you see people attempting to create a conflict between science and religion by using these these specific examples, creation versus evolution, stem cells and birth control, they're pointing to a small subset or a minority of examples and choosing to ignore the overwhelming majority of examples where there is no conflict. And they're using their bias to point out those few controversies in order to serve their agenda of pushing forward this conflict theory, which has long been disproven. Let me continue reading. Research on perceptions of science among the American public concludes that most religious groups see no general epistemological conflict with science and that they have no differences with non-religious groups in propensity to seek out scientific knowledge. Although there are often epistemic or moral conflicts when scientists make counterclaims to religious tenets. A study of U.S. college students concluded that the majority of undergrads in both the natural and social sciences do not see conflict between science and religion. Another finding in the study was that it is more likely for students to move from a conflict perspective to an independence or collaboration perspective than vice versa. So let me pause and add my commentary. So up until now, we have just been discussing the discredited conflict thesis that religion and science are in conflict. Now we want to move into talking about the thesis that most contemporary historians and scientists say is a more accurate description of the relationship between science and religion. So what is the complexity thesis? The complexity thesis is a historiographical approach to the history of science that originated in 1991 with John Hedley Brook in his landmark book, Science and Religion, Some Historical Perspectives, considered the most important contribution to the historiography of the field in a century. The complexity thesis acknowledges the rich complexity and diversity of interplay between science and religion. It describes thoroughly the entangled relationship that science has with religious beliefs, not only providing presupposition, sanction, even motivation for science, but also regulating discussions of method and playing a selective role in the evaluation of rival theories. Again, the complexity thesis is the consensus among most historians of science and religion. The complexity thesis is a historiographical approach that emphasizes the different political, cultural, social, or intellectual aspects present in the relationships between science and religion, which opposes the reductionist analysis that presupposes conflict or harmony. John Hedley Brook, the author of The Complexity Thesis, states, When I wrote my book on science and religion, I had read a lot of literature which suggested two very common views about science and religion. One was the view that science and religion inevitably are in conflict. The other, not so well known, but certainly adopted by many religious people, was that science and religion have a relationship of compatibility or harmony when they are properly understood and conflict is the result of a misunderstanding. Now, I was unhappy with both of those positions. Doing a lot of research in the history of science, I discovered that the relationship was not as simple as those two grand narratives of conflict or harmony would suggest. For example, many scientists had strong religious beliefs. They did not see a conflict between those beliefs and their own work. But equally, they may not have been orthodox in their religion, so they did not fit easily into these conventional categories. I could see another thing that was wrong with the conflict thesis was that the religious ideas in Western Europe actually contribute important ideas in the development of science, even with the idea that through studying nature, you saw something of the power and wisdom of God as the creator of the world. So the more I looked at the history, the more I became aware that one needed a word other than conflict and harmony to express how the relationship often existed in the past. The relations between science and religion have been constructed in many different ways and in many ways that compete with each other, so that there is no simple story you can tell about the relationship between science and religion. You have to tell many stories if you're going to capture the historical reality. So that's what lay behind the book. It was a protest against the view that there is some single ideal account that can give you what the relationship between science and religion is. The meaning of those two words has changed significantly over time. If you ask Isaac Newton, how would you, Isaac Newton, reconcile your science with your religion? That is a question that Newton, I think, would not understand because he saw himself pursuing what in the 17th century was called natural philosophy. And natural philosophy included the discussion of God's relationship to nature. So it would have been very difficult, a very strange question for Newton to answer. So there are complexities of that kind. You can use Newton again as an example because his religion was Protestant Christian, but he was also a heretic because he did not believe in the doctrine of the Trinity. So when we study the real and actual beliefs of the scientists, even some of the great scientists in the past, their beliefs do not fit simple categories. You have to be able to include both harmony and conflict. 
because they have existed. I just attended a talk this morning on Turkish science and the way it is projected. And for many Muslims, the idea of a conflict between science and religion is an impossible idea. The harmony with science is part of religious identity. So the idea of a harmony is not just the invention of historians. It is what I think many religious people believe or certainly would like to believe that is so. I think there are still writings that consider the conflict theses a real fact. And they are sometimes very critical of what I would call the revised historiography that has grown out of the complexity theses. There are people who believe that there is a fundamental conflict between science and religion, and therefore you have to reflect that in the way you write history. And I could give you one or two examples of authors who are still wanting to push the idea of necessary conflict, but they are not in the majority. I think most professional historians of science would now reject both the conflict and harmony because they are what we call essentialist positions. They assume that there is something essential about science and something essential about religion, which means that they must conflict. And historians who study the way concepts and ideas and even theoretical terms, the way they change with time, make it very difficult to adopt those essentialist positions. I think there are reasons why some people deeply dislike religion and they do their best to demolish or remove religion from the world. The new atheists, as they are called, and they have had that as an agenda, not merely saying that religion is a bad thing, but it is such a bad thing and it has done so much damage. We need to remove it. And of course, those people, Richard Dawkins would be an example. They see science as a very powerful weapon for attacking religion, certainly attacking fundamentalist religion. One of the real exciting areas of development in the discussion of science and religion in recent years has been the general theme of the relationship between the global and the local and the phenomenon of knowledge circulation in science and religious studies because much of the literature has been written in English on Western Europe and American figures. What we are beginning to realize now is even the words science and religion do not mean the same thing when you are talking, for example, about Asian or Sub-Saharan African cultures where the issues that we sometimes discuss as issues in science and religion are understood in terms of quite different categories. Let me pause reading just to say that that's something that I have been saying in videos about ethnoscience for years now. I'll continue reading. My colleague Ron Numbers and I edited a volume called Science and Religion Around the World, trying to emphasize this point that the stories you can tell about what we call science and religion have been very different in different societies. This does create a tension because it is part of the culture of science to stress the universal of all scientific knowledge. So a scientific theory that is true, correct, applies everywhere in the world. It is not going to be different in a different country. But the interpretation of new forms of science does differ in different parts of the world. So let me pause there. So when I talk about ethnoscience, right, Critics of ethnoscience always say, well, science is science no matter where you go, right? The whole purpose of ethnoscience is, yes, science is science no matter where you go, but you have to also take into consideration the ethnic and cultural perceptions of the people who are doing the science. Let me continue reading. And of course, there are very different religious priorities and values according to the cultures you come from. And to study those gives us a much richer set of perceptions and understandings for understanding our own particular religious history and our own particular scientific culture. There is an interesting tension between science as an enterprise which purports to give us universal knowledge, knowledge that applies everywhere, and religious cultures that tend to be more pariahical. There is a tension between the universality of science and the more locally based aspect of religious traditions. So in conclusion... The conflict thesis that suggests that religion and science have been in conflict methodologically, factually, and politically throughout history has long been discredited and has lost favor among the majority of contemporary scientists and historians of science. Contemporary scientists and historians widely accept a complexity thesis which thoroughly describes the entangled relationship that science has with religious beliefs and emphasizes the different political, cultural, social, or intellectual aspects present in relationships between science and religion and acknowledges the rich complexity and diversity of interplay between science and religion.